My name's Nando Brown from the School of Canine Science and today we're gonna be looking at breaking down, dissecting, diving into, you get the idea. We're gonna be looking at false indications in nose work. Cue the intro. False indications will happen. So we must include them as part of our training program. You've got to know how to deal with them. Now, those of you that are on the scent course, think back to Dean's Contamination Week and the studies done on false indication. It's likely that they fall into two categories. One is where there's some form of odor that they believe they're meant to be alerting on. Maybe you've accidentally taught them to indicate on the tin instead of the target. Maybe you've contaminated the environment with trace amounts of gun oil very easily done. Maybe the dog is unsure and reverting back to a behavior which has a high history of reinforcement. Maybe you're cueing the freeze because of the clever Hans effect. We covered that in the course earlier as well, sorry. Another common reason is the dog is used to finding lots of hides in a small amount of time. So start throwing out indications to try their luck, which is why we work through the five, four, three, two, one work week, reducing the convicts. It's like we plan this shit out, but whatever the reason is, the dog starts to alert, then there's no target there, then that's known as a false positive. If the flip side is they miss the target altogether, then that's known as a false negative. So how do we work through this problem? There are a few options we can work through. If we start with the behaviorism paradigm that most dog trainers are savvy with, then we can talk about the pros and cons of a purely operant response to the behavior. Positive punishment is rarely, if ever, gonna be my go-to for an incorrect response in nose work. The likely outcome is a dog that keeps more of an eye on you for any signs of trouble over keeping 100% focus on finding the odor with his nose. The cons outweigh the pros. If you're interested in nose work, you've likely seen this clip somewhere. So anytime the dog does something that's not right, the dog the handler gives the dog a yank on the collar um, to prevent it happening again. But what happens is the arousal goes up, the confusion goes up, the concern goes up in the dog. He starts jumping up at the handler, trying to escape away from the odor. These are all things that are not beneficial in scent detection. All righty then. Extinction is a method we've discussed already where there's no response from you. Too much of this though can lead to a dog that takes any stillness or, or duration as a signal to move to the next hide. And then there's the possibility of frustration and extinction induced variables. We discussed those in the learning theory module of Puppy Lab. Then we can look at negative punishment. This can come in two main ways. Either you remove the dog from the search area, putting them up, or you remove the opportunity for reinforcement by removing the target odor. Now, when we're training on pipes, I've used the removal of pipes, the hot pipe, uh, quite effectively. I was taught how effective this was on a chicken training camp with Bob Bailey, teaching the chickens a discrimination exercise. Ooh, you're hard, showing off. But when it comes to the environmental searches, this can get a little bit messy. There is another option available to us as well. This is where we consider the dog as our teammate. We walk up to the area where the dog is indicating. We check out and admire whatever it is the dog's indicating on. The guys at our Mondio Club will take the little wood that has been retrieved in the nosework section and they'll sniff it before saying, no, that's not it. Now I'm not 100% sold on that yet, but the thought process is the same. Whether you tell them that it's not what you're looking for or just admire it with the dog and then move on, it's gonna depend on the robustness of the dog, the understanding of the training system that you guys are using, the skill set of the handler, etc., etc., etc. So now you've got a few options available to you for the way in which you deal with false indications. But as always, prevention is better than a cure. One way to avoid the dog starting to throw out more falsies is double blind searching. When you invest more time in these, then you start to trust your dog a little more each time. Sometimes it's just not that easy though. So to build confidence in your dog when you haven't got someone else to lay searches for you, you can do a search circuit. Pick a number of areas on your house or on your walk. 
The amount of searches you lay is going to depend on your dog's skill level. We often lay 10 searches for our dogs. I'll lay them one day, Joel will do them the next. But even on the days that I lay them out, I'll be buggered if I can remember where I've hidden each one. So it's almost like I'm doing half of them blind anyway. At each search area, we'll have some kind of marker to show the st search start line. We'll run all the searches back to back with the same dog before getting the next one out. These are killer for knocking your dog out and getting them used to loads of different search areas and building stamina. But build up to 10 and call it off early if your dog is losing too much motivation. If you've got other ideas on how to deal with false indications, then as always, we'd love to hear your point of view in the comments. And bonus points if you can leave pros and cons for your method over ours. If you've enjoyed the video, then we'd appreciate it if you hit the thumbs up. It genuinely does help. Or if you've got a cold, dead heart, you're welcome to hit the thumbs down too. Oh, son of a bitch. You shot me in the air. If you want to come and join over 1,000 other dog trainers teaching their dogs a solid six months worth of scent work with geeky science sections and walkthroughs of the how-tos, then hit the link in the description. Love you.